we've been working on uh, connecting the three countries that um, the Master DK talks about as, I guess, instrumental in um, manifestation of the Aquarian Age and the new civilization. Not to say that other countries aren't uh, engaged, but those three countries are uh, the U.S., the U.K., and Russia. And so uh, we have invited two groups from each of those three countries to kind of uh, present uh, their view. So today we will be hearing from the Ashram School of the Four Rays of Attribute in Russia. And um, I've had some relations with this group for quite some time, about four years now. And uh, I had always wanted to kind of connect them with the greater esoteric community uh, in the West. And so this is kind of, uh, if we if it all comes off today and we get to hear from them, it's a little bit of like their coming out party. Um, so what I've been studying with them is, is their approach. Um, they're certainly um, working with the same kind of source material that all of us work with. And I'm, I'm sure you read uh, in their, um, their little blurb about, um, you know, they certainly follow Alice Bailey and, and a, all the edgeless wisdom tradition coming from uh, Blavatsky on down. And uh, also Eastern uh, Arabindo, they, Sri Arabindo, they mentioned. So, you know, their background is, uh, I guess, similar to most people who do study ageless wisdom. So I've been part of the school and participating in regular classes for about four years. Um, the approach, uh, spiritual approach, is about connection with soul and, um, and the group. And um, as a practitioner, you work... Uh, very hard to sort of building the onto Karana and making that connection. Um, it also works under a principle of um, seeing what you know issues you have or situations in your life and what the soul lesson is from each of these situations. And so it's helped me enormously to get through some um, some real difficulties in my life. Um, the leader of the group is called Urana, and uh, she's quite um, knowledgeable, impressive, and interesting. And uh, I had a preview. I was uh, I attended their conference in Moscow. Um, I remember the dates, something like the third, fourth, and the fifth of of November. And I got a bit of a preview of the talk today. So I think you'll find it all if it ha happens and it all comes off, it will be very interesting. Um, Oran is going to be talking about the architecture of consciousness of the Aquarian Age and uh, looking at uh, some geometric um, uh, diagrams that will help uh, explain this uh, architecture of consciousness. Um, so I think you'll find it very interesting. So um, we will also see if, is Alec, are you there? And can we connect with, and anyone from Tetrada is there? Yes, please your, raise your hand so that I can identify you and Unmute you. It seems that nobody's um announcing themselves as uh, participants. Okay, well, why don't I keep going? I'll okay. talk for a little bit more and, and see if anyone else joins us. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about their full moon uh, practice, uh, which is certainly a little different from um, maybe the meditative approach uh, that we use. Um, they uh, are titled the, the Full Moon a Mystery, and uh, they also look at the... Um, uh, rather than astrology, they look at opening each field. So their fields begin in Capricorn or in December and uh, move around to Sagittarius being the last field. And the idea is to open the kind of um, or unlock the field of consciousness that is associated with each one of those, uh, not necessarily with the signs, but with a, it's kind of an ascending level of consciousness. Um, that goes through each of the uh, the 12 or 13 full moons. And the idea is always throughout uh, all the practice is to build in 
uh, certain qualities into our um, energy field. So we try in, in each, um, both in our personal practice and also in the full moon practice, we're bringing in specific qualities and we're also repulsing uh, qualities that we want to release. And so the full moon practice becomes a deepening of that building in of qualities into the three vehicles. Um, it's also about grounding the qualities in each of the vehicles. So in the physical etheric, in the astral, and in the mental vehicle. Um, so it's done as a ritual and it's done in a group formation. Uh, and it's, uh, it's quite a powerful experience to attend one of their full moon mysteries. Um, okay, I'm going to pause again and see if we have anybody так. who's joined us. Что, они предоставляют нам слово или как? А, ah, here we go. Yeah. Okay, we'll start. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. Please do, continue. Okay. So... Все, мы можем начинать? Do you see us? Yes, I do. Hello, Dennis. Right. And you can see the video. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's start. Итак, я приветствую сейчас. Вместе с братством нашей школы и десяти филиалов, которые сейчас присутствуют вместе с нами, нашу первую встречу. Let me greet the first. Let me greet you along with the brothers of our ten branches. In this first meeting in this concept, concepts, the schools of the new era of the universal esoteric education are present here. And we hope that it will be this meeting that will lead to long-term spiritual contact of all subjects of all schools present here. And we also hope that not only the people who participate here will be included, but also subjects from another country. Let me start from the introduction of those spiritual schools and our branches who are present here. It is the Ashram School of the Seventh Way in Moscow. It's based in Moscow. In Moscow schools, students from all ten regional branches learn study here, and also students group of Canada and Africa, Côte d'Ivoire. Вот, и поэтому, пожалуйста, я представляю, прошу всех, всех, тех, кто участвует в этом, все филиалы, показать себя и выйти на экран и познакомиться, чтобы вы увидели их лица, их существование на физическом плане. Пожалуйста, сайт. Ты не сможешь там включить скайп? А, там только скайп Итак, представляйтесь, пожалуйста, какие школы, и, как говорите название школы, and название и, uh, и, и город. Schools to come out а в чем они выводят using, using so Итак, покажите московскую школу, присутствующую здесь. Людей не всех, конечно, только самих москвичей, потому что одновременно с нами в московской школе работают наши заочники. Пожалуйста, можно we're, показать зал? Да. For... Присутствующие, присутствующие ученики – это только очень небольшая, где-то треть учеников всей московской школы. Всего у нас в Москве около 60 человек. 60, 60 And... человек московской школы. Это вот присутствующие здесь. Да, представьтесь, пожалуйста. Так, Саратов, пожалуйста, представьтесь. Саратов, вы. Саратов, свидетельство Здесь мы собраны. Это ученики академии. Школа Саратов. Школа Саратов. 
and School of Open Heart Center. Thank you, now Penza. Please introduce yourself. The Penza Scientific Center Resurrection. Students of the Academy and the students of Penza mm -hmm. Scientific Center. Thank you. Tallinn. Tallinn, please. Estonia. Are you online? Estonia. The, our center is called Ray, mm -hmm. and we have gathered here. Так, Нарва. The city of Narva, also Estonia. Estonia. We are online. We invite the city of Tumen. The center is called Ladder. And the students of the academy are gathered here. This is, this is Siberia. Siberia. Dnipro, Ukraine. Dnipro or Dnipro Petrovsk is the, is the Ukraine. The center is called Enlightenment. Да, и там тоже, так сказать, существуют ведущие данные школы. Десять учеников. Вот стоит ведущий школы, которые, пожалуйста, могут подсказать. Просто у них сейчас с видео проблемы, они не могут быть представлены. Дальше Екатеринбург. Посвятитель в центр вратам город Екатеринбург. The center is called the Gateways, and they are gathered uh, both mm -hmm. students of both the Academy and the Open Heart Social Psychological Center. And they treat us. Да, да, пожалуйста, да, да, да. Вот, хорошо. Дальше, сколько у вас человек сейчас в этом вашем городе? How many students are currently in your city? Шесть человек. Шесть человек. Так, currently six students in Екатеринбург. Это у нас, это у нас Нижегородская, да. Вот Нижний Новгород. Вот Верхний Волжский регион. Ведущий до тем же Региональный общественный просветительский центр. Региональный центр. Отчество развития личности. Это районный город, связанный как раз с Нижним Новгородом. Вот, но имеющий самостоятельный статус. Пожалуйста, держите. Ручки помогите. Where's your hands? Zerzhensk. We can hear you, Zerzhensk, we can hear you. The Center for Harmonious and Unarmed Development of Personality. They work for 23 years and currently they are 12 students. Yes. The average period of existence of all the existing filials is from 20 to 25 to 28 years. So this is not a new thing. So this is not a new thing. So this is not a new thing. Schools and branches that we see here, they started in the 1990s, so they are, most of them, most of the schools are 20 to 30 years of age as, as the schools. Now we greet the city of, of Kovrov, Cultural and Enlightenment Center on Harmonious Relationships and Healthy Life. 
И сколько, и сколько мы существуем? Сколько мы существуем? 25 лет. 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 Мы хотели бы уже начать свою вступительную медитацию. Она будет и краткой, потому что времени у нас мало. А, потому что надо представить достаточно много. Мы в очень красиве, если есть возможность в наших организациях, прибавить нам полчаса для работы, потому что материал очень большой, объемный. И мне бы хотелось его изложить полноценно, не комкая, не сколько organizers to extend the time of this webinar, if this is possible, so that our members from another continent could, in, could also see the whole of the Please prepare for chanting meditation and, up in, and in the end of the meditation we'll all to the Great Invocation, we'll sing the Great Invocation. Всем ученикам нашим our students, прошу минуту use полной тишины для возможности соединения со своей индивидуальной for the possibility душой. of connecting to your individual soul. Итак, мы осознаем себя в предстоянии we realize ourselves перед очень важной, on the я бы сказала, эпохальной встречей пространства России и духовной школы России, которая существует уже более 30 лет, и наконец-то впервые выходит на связь and, uh, со своим братством в других странах и континентах. Connect to the brothers on other continents. I ask, I invite you to feel being on the doorsteps and in a conscious act we step the border of one sphere of universal teaching the universal doctrine that was transmitted and given to us by the great masters of the hierarchy of light and the masters who descended this knowledge during 150 years of preparation for the new era. Let's feel this huge sphere и локализуем сейчас сутратму, источник сутратму в пространстве храма России, в пространстве России и ее иерархической системы. Мы просим, не обращаемся к владыке храма России, который стоит в великой who stands as one great light, life of the ashram of the first grade, who leads the whole spiritual temple of Russia. You know the name of the master of the first, of the ashram of the first train, so I do not spell this name now, but we all know this vibration and we stand under this vibration for more than 30 years. Please feel this powerful subtratma stand up. 
через владыку, через владыку храма России уже на уровне Ашама Руча атрибута. Это владыка Ашама Седьмого Руча. Поэтому храм России имеет первый луч Монады и седьмой луч Твоей Души. The first ray of Monad and the seventh ray of the soul. We call the Lord as the Ashram of the seventh ray and ask to open the subtract of Ashram consciousness where the students of inner groups of the Ashram of the seventh ray stand up with whom I work during all this time of my existence on my spiritual path and where My students work in the zone of third area consciousness, in the zone of the thinker where I work, second initiation on the second plane of manas, third subplane of manas, and four, five, and six subplanes of mental bodies in the, in the zone of Именно this school ashram. It is like this that the ashram school stands up. Or will they say the ashram school? Because the vibration starts from the ashram, from the structures of ashram, and then from certain Through certain students on the inner spiritual plane, it manifests into the physical students who are incarnated and stand in this work. I ask all students to enter into this work. And when you step into this zone, I ask you to open the path of evolutionary process. Each student goes through, enters their spiritual group, and by this way the group soul is being built, the group focus of consciousness of each zone of consciousness of each zone. Now the group units gather into the course of year vibration, physical, astral, and mental zones, seven, six, and five lines of three on each of the academic year. And by, in this way, the vibration of the year becomes a holistic hierarchical structure. Now I invite the zone of lesser schools, all different levels of lesser schools who hold certain zone of consciousness, a certain vibration of the ray, certain planes and levels of matter. Normally, Each lesser school has three or four years when the students leave and exist. And finally, the lesser schools, they are part of the main school, so-called main school, which constitutes and, and holds the hierarchical system of lesser schools and is guided by the spiritual brothers in upper mental plates or the level of causal matter. And finally, all, less, all main schools, the seven, seven main schools, starting from the youngest, the schools of physical polarization, through the schools of astral polarization, or so-called psychological consciousness, through the schools of inner mental polarization, or schools of inner path, they reach out and connect the schools who are present on the causal plane. There are also five schools where I work as a student and disciple of ashram and sub-ashram consciousness. So therefore, all the structure is hierarchical, complex structure, differentiated to very youngest junior levels from senior to, to, to the to most junior levels of consciousness of the human. So I ask to stand into this one spiritual space of this school, ashram school, and to open it in its total hierarchy and wholeness. And in the final act, we open up in the temple of 
часть Russia, которых находится в московской школе, а часть которых учеников работают только в данных городах to и в данных районах, в данных краевых районных местах. Russia, я прошу почувствовать, как раскрывается еще одна сфера, большая сфера, сфера которая удерживается также школы Ашема, которая удерживается более высоким владыкой храма России, находящимся на буддхическом плане. Если школа Ашам удерживается нашей группой учеников Ашамного ученичества в зоне первого, круга лепестков, в зоне нулевого круга или планетарного братства между служителями и служителя, то храм России удерживается уже великим учителем буддхического плана, крестом новой эпохи Водолея. Он встает сейчас именно в этой зоне и удерживает как часть своей работы храм России. Почувствуем его пространство, почувствуем тот объем, который он удерживает, и поэтому через школу идет раскрытие новой, нового пространства, новой цивилизации эпохи Водолея России. Наконец, последняя сегодняшняя точка — это мы включаем сюда все те школы, все те континенты, страны, которые сейчас присутствуют в этом пространстве. Я прошу уже встать всех тех учеников, которые, которые готовы к сотрудничеству, готовы к реальному сотрудничеству уже настоящей реальной школы, Ашамом. Четырех лучей атрибутов, седьмого, шестого, пятого, четвертого России. Я прошу почувствовать и стать как единый организм, как новый, строящийся планетарный организм человечества. Being built now of the humanity of the сегодняшняя встреча положит начало долгосрочной работе, долгосрочной и плодотворной совместной работе, которая будет, я надеюсь, она будет именно стоять за мир во всем мире и за объединение стран и народов. Да будет так, да исполнит. И пусть в качестве мантры, великого мантрама, прозвучит великий призыв. Прошу всех встать.
из центра называемого расы человеческой, пусть план любви и света осуществится и да замкнется печаль. Ведущая козлу, и да замкнется печать, ведущая козлу, и да восстановят свет любовь и весь vibration. <coughs> Silence, please. Deep bow of gratitude for joint work concludes the introductory meditation. Please sit down. <coughs> Итак, для того, чтобы понять и познать so in order to comprehend and to cognize, to understand the volume of our joint work, let's start from the introduction. Начнем с того, что мы с вами, и, наверное, это не секрет ни для кого, присутствуем в начале новой эпохи, в новом цикле начала новой Многие знают о том, and many что of you отчет know начала этой новой эпохи начинается с 2000 was in 2012. I would even say 0012 year as the first, first millennium of the age of Aquarius. It was in this year that an important moment happened. It was a touch, touching of the consciousness of humanity with the galactic equator and partially with the center of the galaxy. And, this, and our school was in the mystery work of the full moon in Capricorn. The first few stood up and transmitted the consciousness to the planetary plane that is connected with the cosmic plane towards the galactic center. It was the only, the only, it was only once in our lifetime where our group 
stood under the center of the galaxy. Starting from that moment, we received that huge spiritual power and vibration, which for us started the new countdown, the new, the new count of the, of the age of the Christ and the first 30 years of the Aquarian age. So, this, so we are now in the seventh year of the first 13 year cycle of the new age of Aquarius. We uh, see the 13 years cycle as uh, mandala of 13 signs or 13 fields, where the 13th being the step or the door and the step up to the new spiral level of evolution. So we understand that now we are in the breakthrough seventh year because the previous, the first seven years, a new genetic code was being seeded, a new spiritual genetic code was being founded and seeded through the creation of the school and its structures and methodical based methods and, and um, spiritual teachings was laid down in the first seven years of this era. So I think that this point is not by chance because now there is an opportunity, although we have many moments of difficulties, difficulties and op opposites, but I feel they are, have only personal character, personal nature to them, so they are not important. What's important is that we shift from the involutionary arc or Sutratma path of the first seven years. So starting from the seven years, after the first seven years, the se second seven year cycle begins as a path of return to the source, which started this cycle and the path of evolution. It is in this year that Uranus, which is a principle of higher mind, entered the fifth field or uh, the sign, astrological sign that we know as as the calf. We actually shifted from astrological science to the system of fields as it was transmitted to me by the master in the world of the school. So it comes down from the first to the second, seventh field, and, and then ascends from the seventh to the thirteenth field. So now we are on the arc of return. So what's interesting is our meeting is in the eleventh field, or in the sign of Scorpio. The Uranus entered the sign of calf. So we are now on the axis of the five to of the fields from five to eight. So what's going on? It is this axis that holds the foundation of the new evolutionary arc. But the Uranus, which moves into the fifth field, it disappears. It disappears, it dematerializes, and it expands this matter moving to moving further to the manifestation of consciousness. And the sun, the principle of the seventh field, it on the opposite, it ascends, it goes up, it strives to return to the source. This creates a huge tension, huge planetary tension, I would say initiatory tension. And we must understand that this is the initiation to enter the new 
посвятить эту точку, которая не жалея себя, начинает discovers and covers the persons who are ready to enter into this class of uh, students or disciple and by his life to break through the, all the obstacles and move on the evolutionary part. So I invite all of you, my brothers, I feel you, I ask you to feel this great task and to stand with us into this path of evolution and return. During these 30, first 30 years, a structure must be built that will be a matrix uh, or an archetype of the new human consciousness, the new methods, new principles of new civilization must arise, new methods of opening the consciousness. And I will tell, I will talk about this today. All of this must start working. So after this, after this, this 13 year structure that was created will be the foundation for building the new humanity. I conclude this introduction by sharing with you that this process is only possible through the efforts of students and initiated disciples of all countries who who fulfill this task of stepping through the three un personality and exiting to the no sphere or to the causal plane the sphere of higher mind it becomes an original spiritual genetic genetic program of new consciousness that is being built and consciousness of the whole planet so that's why i took this uh, use this invitation to talk to you today and invite you to joint work now, so now I would like to share with you the aims and goals that we see and maybe you would resonate and respond to these aims and goals that you will now see on the screen. I will read it loud. These aims were given to the school in the 90s, so it is 30 years after these aims and tasks appeared before us, and we were working hard on these aims and tasks. Let me read it aloud. First, to train candidates for the occult path of spiritual discipleship in its new quality of group consciousness and group initiation. The path of spiritual discipleship and initiation in this school is going through the conscious construction of Antakarana, or the spiritual bridge that connects the triple integrated personality of the disciple or group of disciples with the individual soul or group soul as the higher ego or, or the causal body of the thinker, Manas. Second, breakthrough or going beyond the spiritual program of the fourth race of astral polarization, which was manifested or realized in a religious mystical way of spiritual ecstasy and merging with the divine. Uh, so going beyond this and going towards the path and program of the fifth race, which has to do with the mental polarization or mental orientation of humanity and working through the principle of occult science, metaphysical and philosophical research. 
functioning as an instrument of consciousness of all levels of matter, from physical to spiritual matter. Three. The school also cultivates in the body of the ashram the future seeds of consciousness of the sixth race or the sixth sub-race as spiritually connected and interrelated group units of consciousness of the souls of the disciples. These group bodies attracted by the law of vibration or co-vibration of the race begin long-term joint work on the formation of new planetary body of the great heavenly man or one humanity of the earth of the new age of Aquarius. We never stirred from these aims and tasks. These aims and goals are too high to transcend it. So we did not deviate. However, the new tasks give us more concrete levels of work in our school and in the Temple of Russia. Let me read these new aims aloud. First, entrain the spiritual path of building the group sub -ashram and ashram consciousness in the ashram school of the four rays of the attribute in Russia and possibly in the United States and in Europe through their subjects as a principle of hierarchical system, hierarchical system principle in one structure of the school, one point five vibration of unit of unity of ray of the aspect and ray of the attribute that built the goal of the line of the rain of the ashram of the sixth, sixth and fifth and four rays of the attribute. 1.2, opening of the line of the ray of the attribute in the zone of main and lesser school. 1.3, actualization of the zone of subplanes and sub subplanes and levels of matter of consciousness in the zone of each lesser school and the group. 1.4. Actualization of initiatory centers of consciousness in each of the subjects of individual person, personality and group soul. That was point one. Now point two. Conscious opening on each level of the school of the four rays of attribute of preparation and going on the path of individual and group initiation as transition to the next stage of opening the inner natures inner nature of their consciousness and exiting to the next level in the three bodies of their personalities and lesser inner soul. Point three, opening and building of the new method, the new method of scientific and practical synthesis in the inner work of consciousness of each level of lesser school and methodical work of different scientific directions, departments as truly professional, strictly professional and academic approach, professional and systematic approach 
to education and upbringing and education of the students of the school. Point four, building of the new levels of consciousness of human subject, of each individual and group unit of the school as interrelation and cooperation as, sorry, as growing and opening in a student of new phylogenetic qualities and features of subracial consciousness, of the consciousness of the sub-race, transforming not only this particular student, but all structures that this student is guiding of junior brotherhood of the school. Point five. The aim and task of consciousness working work in the zone of mental integration of three bodies of students and the entering we're into the fourth principle of, of soul of the group of the, of the group soul and the soul of their mental as the principle of spiritual triad tetrad which sets in consequential unity of the groups of this line of ray it sets the spiritual molecular chain, spiritual molecular DNA chain of the new consciousness of human kingdom in its entirety and connection with causal soul of this ashram consciousness. Point six. In this conscious act of building the spiritual antakarana, mastering by the student of the school as subject which stands in the center of consciousness of his lesser soul of the group, Mastering the energies of lesser souls of Deva evolution of the seventh, sixth, and fifth creative hierarchies in accordance with his students' subplanes of his personality and their, it is Deva's subplanes of their consciousness as spiritual cooperation and education of Deva's helpers in education and directing the consciousness of junior brotherhood of given school under the strict control of spiritual mind of the mentor. Point seven and the final. One. Systematic and hierarchical approach to the matter, the energy, and the consciousness of his group and lesser hierarchical subject in physical, etheric physical body, which which is manifested as the unity of 13 systems, 13 biological systems of his organism, his body. The interrelation of the work of the mind and the conscious physical soul through research and usage of occult laws of unity of spirit and matter, namely 
I will give examples of several spiritual laws so that you understand what we're talking about. Three laws of, of multitude of the spiritual laws. So I'll give you only three as an example. First law, the law of conservation of unity. Of the seventh principle of spirit matter in each of the seven spheres of spirit matter, expanding in the process of life, not only the scale and volume, but also the conditions of morphological structure in the space of the subject of consciousness. No, I, I correct. Uh, not the conditions, but I, I, I had to say the um, elaborating and, and making more complex the morphological structures in the space of the subject of consciousness. So they become more complex. Second law, the law of spiritual inversion of two poles or two great beginnings of life of every cycle, great and small, begetting by itself the principle or causing the principle of cycles and rhythms of all phases of movement, of primary access, of one spiritual sphere of life. Law three, third law, the law of growing and expansion of the principle of systematic systems principle. Uh, when the subject grows his consciousness in, 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 the, in the ray and the line of ray. And the last fourth ray I will give you. The law of seven transformations or seven initiations as manifestation of the principle of, of subjectivization, spiritual subjectivization of matter, so the matter becomes a spiritual subject on the evolutionary arc of every cycle. I finished reading about the goals so that you understand the huge work that we have to do and we understand that we need hard labor and systematic or system esoteric uh, education, not only the esoteric, but also academic education in all areas of civilization. Therefore, the next, the next slide, I'd like to show you a structure of the school in brief so that you understand what is this, the system of coordinates that is working here and how the work is being built. First of all, the, first of all, the change of the system of the rays, of the rays. not the change, but a clarification. So we know about the three rays of the aspect and four rays of the attribute. However, each of the rays of the aspects creates his own system. We use the Sanskrit words Shiva for the first ray, Vishnu for the first, second ray, and Brahma for the third ray. These are the names that we use so that, so that we understand it. We speak of the words who, who are holding the systems. They are distributed according to the lines of matter. Seven rays and 
the Sheva system works for the first three, five, and seven has completeness. So when we're talking about the Shiva system, we are talking about the subjects who have the first ray of monad, might be individual subjects, group subjects, subjects of the schools, might be subjects of the, of the countries, might be the subjects of the cities. Doesn't matter if the subjects subject has a first ray of monad, then this subject belongs to the Shiva system. So, doesn't matter, so no matter what is their ray of the soul, their ray of the monad determines his, <laughs> the, his uh, system. So we'll use this as a pointer. The next system is a Vishnu system. It starts from the second ray and includes four ray, second, fourth, and sixth ray, which is the basis of the matter, and it uh, in this way. So it doesn't matter that the system doesn't have other rays. All the rays exist in each system. However, uh, rays are an additional rays. So, and each person has the base rays and additional rays as in, as his internal characteristic. And moving on to the Brahma system, we see the race 3, 5, and 7, which has to do with the matter. All the structures are connected, related to the zone of consciousness. The first zone of consciousness comes from the Atma level to the physical level. I will even say from the logoic plane, atmic plane, fourth Bodhi, five Manas, mental and astral and physical. So complete structure is related with planes of matter. And the whole Vishnu system, it occupies the Bodhi plane, monadic mon mon plane, Bodhi and astral plane. And the Brahma system works through Atma, Manas and physical plane. Uh, an important thing is one one more important thing is this system. The system of this race is a racial genetic program, and we know that in the first third race, this structure manifested and developed as the base of third race, and the lords were in the, in this zone, their mental plane. And, and, and Manas plane existed as lords of civilization. They were here, and humanity in physical plane was on the seventh plane in the, in the third race. The second Vishnu system is Atlantis, and cons Atlantean consciousness was developed here, not not from the beginning, but starting from the fourth fourth sub race because the battle between the lords, the dark lords of the third race and the light lords when Jesus went through, when, not Jesus, when, when Christ was undergoing his initiation. It was the great battle between the Brahma system and the Vishnu system led by Christ and his group when they rise to the second plane and plane and the vibration of the second plane starts to appear for the first time. And finally, the Shiva system is the system of the fifth race. And the task of the fifth race includes is about connecting the Brahma system. We know that we have the physical people, physical astral polarization. This is the heritage of the third race. We have also the 
two, six, and four rays here because the Vishnu system is also included as a heritage of Atlantis people of astral polarization. But for the first time, the mental people appear here. So this understanding this system is very important. This was trans this was given to us by the Lord. And in connection with this, we have the lines, the system of lines of rays. What does this mean? It means that in the each of the rays of the attribute, there are three, three rays of the monads. So in the ashram school of the seventh ray, which gathers and unites students who have the seventh ray of their soul. However, they have different monads. They, there are students of with the first ray of monad, second ray of monad, and the third ray of monad. When we do the admission interview, we see what is their characteristic. So we call this different lines. The first ray of monad is we call this fifth line. The second ray of monad means the sixth line, and the third ray of monad is the seventh line. The number of subplanes increases, and I, I will now tell you one important thing that was revealed to me not long time ago, maybe ten years ago. So not long time ago, about ten years ago. It's that there are certain limits of persons who have the third ray of mana, they are limited by the third subframe of their body. So it means that they cannot go to their second or first subplanes. However, the school provides them some possibilities of when working with the second, with the second line. However, their potential is third subplane maximum. Students and persons with a second wave monad can go up to the second subway, and persons with this first wave monad can go up to the first their first subway. So when we see the persons with huge power, which does not end, it's limitless. It is connected with their structure and as a distribution of divine plane and divine lord. So it functions, they function. It's like we have different systems and organs in our body and they are distributed in advance. It is decided in advance which cell goes into the brain, which cell goes into the heart, into the liver, into the blood, etc. So these systems, they were set up in advance by the divine plane. So through the ray, ray characteristic, we can see certain goals and functionality of each student of this school. Same thing here, you see that the school ashram of the sixth ray, there are souls with the first, second, and third ray of Same in the fifth ray. In the fourth ray, fourth ray, things are the same. It's a very important system that was revealed to the school and it allows us to precisely differentiate the structure of each student. Each student belongs to his particular structure, group, vibration, the ray of the soul, the ray of the monads. So the group is organized and chosen for the student according to their characteristic and zone of consciousness. The next thing that was only revealed to us about five years ago is about subplanes and sub subplanes. The system is very complicated. We'll only show you a, 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 more, a simplified model. However, in order to start working with the structure, it's not important to name it. You need to see the internal, internal vision, internal hearing. 
So we only have a few students who are able to work with this. The students who are at least 20 years, who study at least 20 years in the school, they are able to hear what subplane and what sub subplane of the student is working. Junior levels, the first 10, 15 years, the students cannot yet hear that, this because they have not yet developed the inner space. They're still living out externally. So in order to recognize this very serious esoteric education and initiation is required opening of your mental, astral, and physical space, inner space. Let me, uh, I, will, I will explain to you what the subplanes means. While we have some technical difficulties, let me tell you using words. So you have a question, what is subplanes? The subplanes is a, a name for the levels and sublevels of matter, because each matter, physical matter, astral matter, mental matter, manas matter, all of these levels have matter. This matter is structured. In order to understand the structure, it is divided into seven levels. So it's differentiated into several seven levels and becomes and begins to be heard, begins to, to vibrate and sound. We are waiting uh, to see our screen. Well, here you can see the seven planes or levels of matter, logoic, monad, Atma, Atmic, Buddhi, Manas, Astral, and Physical. Now, when we take one of these planes, an example, let's take the physical plane, seventh plane, it's divided into seven layers. So this seven layer and accordingly, each of the seven sublevels will further divide into seven sub sublevels. So, in this way, we have uh, seven sub sublevels. So, very precise, differentiated structure. Each of this has its, its particular quality, its certain quality, nature and matter. But I repeat, in order to hear this, you need to be a very elaborated inner space. Let me give you an example that will hopefully give you an idea. So let me use an example. We had a lot of conferences, spiritual conferences, and one of these conferences, I would show the division of the subplanes and giving the rough, rough, rough qualities to these subplanes. So for example, I'm Let's look at the subplanes of mental body. The highest subplanes of manas. I will not talk about this with you, but the fourth levels, which is in the so-called subject zone of consciousness, is below manas, but the highest, highest plane of mental body before manas. I will read you the qualities of sub sub planes. Sub sub planes, top to bottom. For sub plane, let me show it. This fourth plane of the mental body, and I will read about the qualities of of its seven sub planes. The first sub sub plane, um, which is spiritual in the process of spiritual unity. Spiritual. Uh, um, 
the mind, which is spiritual, becomes spiritual in the process of spiritual unity and equality with the source of highest, higher mind of causal soul, which means we, it is the mind connected with the causal soul. It is the first higher subplane. The second, next one. So it was first one, now it's the, the second. We're going down. It's the mind illuminated included into the light and life of higher soul and working with the mentor for the principle of Antakarana. Now the third, inside the fourth plane, the third subplane, symbolic mind, the symbolic mind, which cognizes the laws and principles of inner space for the system of symbols in the space stereometric architectonics. Space, so it's, it, 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 it creates, it builds stereometry inside itself. Now the 4.4, the fourth in, in the fourth. The mind of subject, subject mind. Self-cognizing as subject in the center of seven axis cross of lesser mental soul and holding the connection with the objective center of the mentor. Number five, five sub, fifth subplane of the fourth plane. Fifth, the mind holding the inner structures of the space of mental body and capable of spiritual building of consciousness of concrete architecture. Six subplane inside the fourth plane, the discerning and discriminating mind. It uh, dis dis discriminates the internal architectonics of consciousness. And finally, the seventh subplane is heartfelt mind, open towards the source of life of the Lord of the mental soul. Please see that the principle of mind is the fourth. What is fourth? Fourth is Buddha plane. Four is consciousness. Fourth way is the way of polarities. Therefore, all the structures are they, they, they are about mind, the mind, but differentiated from the very complex to the more simple. Somewhere it's uh, discriminating, somewhere it's heartfelt, and, and on, on a certain level, it already starts to be able to build a tonic, so it gathers certain qualities. Let's compare it to the fifth subplane, which we call the, the more concrete mind. However, it's, it's the thinking mind, I call it the thinking mind, which means the ability to think. I'll read from top to bottom. I hope you understand. The highest principle of the thinking mind is uh, illuminated and so illuminated mind which which has the quality of light to it. The second principle from that is the subject conscious mind. Third, creative and modeling. Creative and modeling mind. Do you feel the quarters of the fifth ray, the fifth principle? Now the fourth, cognizing and self-cognizing mind. Fifth, logical and building, constru creating constructions. Sixth, reflects, reflexive and uh, discriminating mind. And finally, the seventh, analytical mind. 
And I give you an example so that you understand the differentiation, the the understand the differentiation the of these subplanes is totally real. So when we meet these persons, we feel that this might is still not up to some point. Why? Why is that? Why? Why this mind is not capable of recognizing certain sub inner inner planes because it's it's on a certain sub plane. So to recognize it and to hear it inside of inside yourself and other students, it is also all, only possible for for an advanced student who finds this nature in himself, and then he takes another student. He uh, allows. And he, he he includes him into himself. So first, the principle of work is you, you have to first master all the subplanes. You have to find all the subplanes in you and be able to precisely differentiate all the sub sub levels in your inner space. No, everyone, as you know, the you know the the the, the sweet, the sour. And, like, um, pointy things and smooth things when you use your hands, your skin, if it's bumpy, if it's pointy, if it's smooth, so you must feel it, but in your inner space. Then you take a certain person, his inner nature, connect it with yourself, so you allow you allow this person to enter yourself and you feel what level does he reach so it's not it's not complex when you have this inner tool so you listen and you hear well yes he's he is he does seven the sixth is so so and the fifth he doesn't yet live there so he doesn't have any matter in his fifth of play so but the practice you need practice in order to not mistaken not mistaken the fifth subplane and the fifth subplane for example so it takes a lot of practice okay let's move on let's move on and um, let's look at the structure of the seven main schools the main school it's the school which has to do with the big levels of matter, the school of Russian discipleship, where I work. It's the school where I study, a thinker on his own plane. I think you know who's the thinker, it's the first plane, it's the first subplane of manas, the first atom of manas, the original atom. Then we have the Brotherhood of the Plant Reward Service, three treasures in each lotus which, uh, which rise above to the fourth to the subplane of Manas. I also work there, it's normally the students' disciples of the third initiation. There are 12, and Ellis Bailey is among them. We are brothers in the zone of planet, planetary world service. In the school of... And above that, in the school of Russian discipleship, there are only nine disciples. And the uh, work is not with the rays of the attribute, but with the rays of the aspect. So if you are, if you work with the ray of aspect and one of your words, one of your masters is work with the rays of the aspects, it's up there. And if, we, if you work with the ray, rays of the attribute, you work in a tangible world, world service school. Now the first subplane of manas is the main school of universal knowledge. There are schools that work on, only in the on, the, on, on manas, zone of manas. There are three schools there. Next school, the spiritual consciousness, second subplane of manas. It's the school of ex admitted or accepted discipleship. So only the disciples who are accepted. They work in the zone of four years, as we would say. So those who already know the inner nature have inner pratyahara and connect through the inner centers with the Satratma and hold Antakaran through the internal consciousness. 
the next level is school of spiritual knowledge. Third sub plane of manas is holds this school of all inner students. Five schools are part of it. Only the five schools of only mentally polarized people. Fourth school, subject consciousness. On the fourth sub plane of manas, it's more junior zones, levels, but still requires internal path, internal path. Those who hold great subjects, they are there. Fifth school, school of social psychological consciousness. So it's a sixth subplane of mental, mental plane. I forgot to tell you that the school of subject consciousness on the fourth subplane it holds the school of astral polarization, schools of astral polarization. We uh, always uh, distinguish between the internal, internal path mental polarization and external path, astral polarization. So when we have an admission interview of every student, we always determine his subplane, subplane, subplane zones, race of his of their soul and race of their race. It's based on the number of the subplanes. Normally people of the astral polarizations are students of external outer zone of consciousness, which means in their past lives they were not uh, Kshatri, not Brahman, normally it's, it's Bashir, traders, people who do trade, who do uh, some masters, who do some, some work with their hands, or the zone of Shudra, which is zone of slaves, who work in the field as farmers. Normally they have a certain number of subplanes. Normally they have seven and six subplanes, rarely fifth if they did some mental work. Four subplanes, no one of the Shudras which four subplanes. However, they have four sub subplanes and we recognize their initiations as lesser initiations inside the subplanes. In this way, we always see that the space, their inner space is not filled, which, which lets us see their varna or case, which means their different speed. So their speed of education will be two or three times slower. Mentally polarized people require two or three years for some subject and the physical people will require seven or eight years to pass a certain, such a certain level. So we accept all students, but we immediately recognize what is the, the appropriate level of consciousness, more soft, more astral, more psychological, religious elements appropriate for some people and more mental for others. So it's very precise work for all levels, all sorts of students. Now the main school preparatory path. Here we have only here we have the students who only approach serious uh, education. And the main principle of the of the, of the academy is education. Education means strict rules. You need to be disciplined, discipline, you need to do homework. We don't, you don't say, I want this or I want that. So the beginning levels is mostly Young people, young persons who are only learning, first they learn individually with their mentors, then gradually they start to do subjects on other days a week. They, these are young persons who have, it's, it's like kind of spiritual kindergarten. 
spiritual kindergarten for five or six years of, of kids, the kids up to five or six. So they are still learn to study and to uh, have time for this. Uh, even even though they all have work and families, etc., so they learn to work. So this is, uh, then then they go higher when they learn how to work and how to study. And the final seventh school is not part of the academy, not part of the academy. It's, it's separate. It's the zone of so we call open hearts. It's the stage of, it's the very beginning stage, it's, it's so-called buffer zone, which means it, it stands between the pure, pure socium, the society, the mass consciousness. They attend some webinars, they attend some workshops, they come and go, they say, I, I like this, I don't like that. So these beginners which come and go, they can learn in, on this level. And when some of them is ready to move on, they get admitted to the academy and some stays for their whole life in the open center. Look at this structure here in the cone. We have inner schools. This is thinker. This is the thinker on his own plane and internal schools of manas, which I told you about. And this yellow sutratma. I'm not sure if you can see this on screen. It goes down. It's the actual structure, so the axis. And these structures, they are based on central symmetry. They are like uh, planetary orbits around the central spiritual axis. So the manas schools is the actual, is the actual schools. These senior schools, they approach manas, and the more junior the schools are, the more outward, the more external they are, the, the, the farther they are from the center. So the names of the schools, which, which we read, uh, which we have just read, we will send out this material. If you, if you know, if you are interested. So the important point, point is that there is different architectonics in each of these. Let us, let us zoom in on, on that slide. And what's, what's interesting, what's important is there's different internal architecture. So let's start from the junior zone. The junior zone, the junior zone. It's the it's on the right of, of the screen. I we hope you can see it. Okay, here it is. This is the beginning level of social, psychological, individual education. It's, it works in this architectonics. The open heart is just gathering, there's no inner architectonics, they're just society. So, it's, so we're, we're talking about the school as the structure which is differentiated and it's not, not a society, not a, not a group, it's, it's a structure where the, where the students are gathered according to a certain principle and the law. So the junior structure is 
they can sit together, but they're not connected. Each of them is on his own. And their mentor is in the center. That's all. And everyone, so it's a circle where they sit in a circle, and each of them, each of the students is working individually with a mentor. Moving on, the second structure is spiritual education, where they have a, a group structure and the mentor. So the group, they start to work together. However, they are still very individual, the students, but now they are a circle. The next uh, spiritual perfection of personality, mental polarization, they start to recognize their bodies. They start to recognize their physical, violet, external, orange, astral, and yellow mental body. They start to recognize the different spiritual spaces inside them. The next school, individual consciousness. Individual consciousness. Look here. You see the radial lines up here, which means that the students are in a group. There are three students in a group, but they are connected one to each other and to the mentor. And the mentor is a point inside a circle. It's a soul. It helps them connect and teaches them to connect with their souls. Next on is collective consciousness. You see the circles, which means they have already built the connection with their individual soul. They know the three bodies of their individual personality and the connection with their soul. So they now stand as souls and connected with the mentor through the three conscious bodies, physical, astral, and mental body. And three levels, three levels of mentor. So they are connected with the three bodies, spiritual bodies of the mentor, his mental, astral, and physical phase. So the structure gets, inner structure gets more complicated, complicated and more structured. Next is the school of communal consciousness. So, this, these are the students of the, what we call Atlantic initiation. They have initiation on their astral plane. So, the communal consciousness, they they're not, not simply using these radio lines. They are, the path enters their bodies and the physical body goes a spiral, like a spiral violet. The astral body is orange, they use spirals. So now this process of interrelation and collaboration of um, three bodies, the physical, more dense, astral, more thin, and the thinner, yet thinner vehicle, mental, they become more air-like, air airy, and light, and they, ent they finally enter and connect with the tree unit structure of the mentor. So this structure is uh, being worked on in their tuning in. And now we move on to this Sobornost consciousness or conciliar consciousness. We have only a few of the senior students. So the structure of our school is pyramid-like pyramid -like because there are only a few senior students. Because when they when they study, they uh, some of them leave. Only only a handful of the students uh, are. It's the students who are usually 25 years in the school. So they approach this level when they are 50 or 60 years of age. 50 is very rarely. Normally, it's 
It's about when they have completed their business with their family. Uh, so they do not sleep. They almost do not sleep. They sleep four or five years, and the rest of their day, day the rest of their time, they work in the school because the, the previous levels they are they have their families and and social work and starting from the subordinate consciousness it's pyramid like structure and the subordinates are ascetics so they ascend on pyramid like structures only three students of this caliber in the group and the structure is tetrad or tetrahedron but it still has have these planes and they use these planes to ascend and they have top they have Sutratma and Sutratma and Dhakarana, they ascend to the source, not only the heart center, but on also the top of the mental zone. They ascend to the mental. And the last one, the final school, is the school of lesser discipleships. This is already a school of discipleship. Same structure, but here we have tetrahedrons, where the pyramids are inside pyramids, inside pyramids. It's the three spheres and the pyramid inside, and three, three treasures in the center. So they, they have a tree, they reach out to the tree hewn structure of their mentor. The, there are three persons in the physical group, three persons in the astral group, three persons in the mental group, and in this way, it's tree hewn nine nine fold structure, and the structure ascends and enters the mentors, the initiators, and the wards. So it's the structure becomes more complex and more hierarchical. We, again, we look at the structure. Again, let's look at the main and lesser schools. These lesser schools, they are part of this part of the bigger schools. So this is a hierarchical system of schools, which is sense. You see this yellow is the mental zone, orange the astral zone, violet is more physical zone, and more external zone, where the junior beginner, beginners are. Then we move on to the scientific department, scientific directions, work of the school, which is very important. We will just show you the volume, the huge volume of this work. So while, while they are looking for the word so we have more and more scientific directions. Let me start from the principle of scientific directions. Дайте 
The principles of scientific work. Let me read it aloud, and then we'll show the actual departments. The, universe, the universalism of the scientific knowledge is the synthesis of all previous achievements of mankind as basis of foundation for the next step of scientific and spiritual evolution. And the basis of the systematic is the hierarchical coordinate system of the main civilizational directions. They follow the, the rays and lines of the race and new scientific directions are uh, manifested, deposited or manifested through the minds of outstanding scientists, outstanding representative of humanity. So in short, it's important to understand that each scientific directions have lords, have its lords. So it's very differentiated. And in our tables, the tables that 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 have uh, methods developed in the academy. So we feel the study pro the, the, the process of study in the academy with our with the methods that are developed in the academy. So the, the, the fifth the fifth swine of ray presented here so what is this five three and five it means ray five three third sub ray and fifth sub sub ray third five sub sub rays 5.4 which means ray five sub ray four and according to this sub rays sub rays we have civilizational departments it will take too long to number to, to to read them aloud for example occult philosophy universal occult philosophy it's 5.4 it's 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 a new teaching of uh, by 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 hegel new teaching of the laws of being then there's esoteric theosophy, then there's universal conceptology. As occult philosophical teaching, then there's subject anthroposophy. Then epistemology is teaching on the, on the principle of cognizing by Roger Bacon. Then metahistory of philosophy. Dokuchayev, natural philosophy, etc. Same thing with microcosmos. So it's it's uh, my name there, Lomonosov, Kili, and Tesla. Occult nominology, occult cosmonomy, Bacteria, Russian scientists, laws of cosmic life, scientific phenomenology, science of initiation processes consciousness of course it's vernatsky here russian scientist meta history methodology meta history vernatsky chizhevsky everywhere these are the sub levels which means one task is being worked at by one department of this department of basics of universal occult knowledge of principle of formation and existence of macro and micro microcosmos further down there's universal occult philosophy further down department of spiritual and andragogy and universal methodology of spiritual path it's anthropogogics it's it means the um, bringing and pedagogy for grown-ups for adult persons again laws of group work basics of initiation processes basics of work in this school that school so we have a huge number of methods i asked the head of the method departments how many how many methods do we have so there's a method for each year of education 
in each school. So it's at, it's might be 300 methods totally in school. Maybe even up to 500 methods. So each year in each school, if they study for 10 or 12 years, we have a method for each year. There's a, there's a there's a department that works incessantly. It creates new methods, so we are fully supplied with these methods. Moving on, on top psychology, word creation and word building, mysteriology, which means a science about mysteries, universal astrology, all of this. Uh, departments have seven sub-departments. Now let's uh, move, move on to the sixth ray, and you'll feel the difference in, 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 in their work. We're looking at it, at it. It's the universe, spiritual universal, Leonardo da Vinci here, Wagner, Skrabin, Kandinsky, music as art of self Tolstoy, Kandinsky, so each of the subchairs have their... Then there's philosophy of consciousness, sixth line, therefore philosophy of consciousness, subjects, epistemology, etc., but it's in the sixth ray. So it's similar to the five, but it's different because in the six, for example, universal ethos. Moving on, there's psychology. It's the psychology has the fifth and sixth and seventh aspect to them, to it. So James Neumann, Robin, Robin Stein, Bugin, Vygotsky, Russian psycho psychologists. Psychology of insight, psychology of spiritual crisis. <laughs> Different <laughs> scientists. Sergei <laughs> Kaplan, Pergamenshik. Mental integration of personality. Archbishop Luke Krishna Krishna Macharya Neumann. Religious psychology. Krishnamurti Vivekananda, Trungpa Rinpoche, subjects of this sub department, and so on, so on. And now let's take a brief look at the seventh ray. Uh, you see, it's elaborated in detail, and papers and works are being written by students who study on these departments. So it's very elaborated now in our school. Now the seventh ray, it's universal philosophic knowledge, psychological knowledge. So now you see the seventh line of ray works with knowledge, not consciousness. It's only knowledge. Psycho, psychological somatics, also here, and let, let's look at the Department of Physical Practices. Valiology. Peter Doinov from Bulgaria. Changes in cellular uh, cellular matter. Scientific methodological valiology, cultural valiology, universal cognition, opening, ethnic opening, education, physical body. So here's healthy life, psychology, body-oriented psychotherapy, anatomy, massage, reflexology, 
education, medical, gymnastics, Brahman, section of uh, many uh, persons, herontology, etc. So it's universal. It's a universal. It's a whole universe of scientists and practices. And religion, we study religions, and, and each religion, our leader who studies religions, she, she's a doctor of science. She teaches courses on Buddhism, Zoroastrian, Zoroastrianism, many different religions. So the program of of, uh, of communal consciousness school, they are now working with Slavic religions, and they have architecture, they start architecture, physical practices, ritual, their rituals, their folklore, art, everything that all that is connected with the ancient Slavic roots. And then they, and when they study all of this, they go into they they go to expeditions and study this in the field. Here we take a look at the. Here we take we can take a look at the timetable where all where each day is filled for our students daily. So they have eight subjects in their academic year. Physical practices, ethical, ethics, creative subjects, music, dance, and uh, painting, mental subjects, contextology, conceptology, lexicography, universal lexicology, only one department, phraseology, and work work with with sources. In one only in one department that that has this subjects. Psychology of personality, energy of consciousness. So mental departments are work with all levels of the school because you saw this solar system of the lesser schools but each of the schools has so many levels and groups and courses inside it so in each group has to be assigned a mental astral and physical subjects so it's very elaborated and of course group classes with their mentors group classes with their mentors five stages of the group class with a mentor first tune in meditation of tuning in building the connection with their souls work with their diary daily work with their daily situations where they're had in their real life and show the results of their inner work in meditation with their real life situations third stage is the work with the with the subjects particular subject four fourth stage is work with their qualities certain qualities that are being given and assigned in a moment of initiation and are worked with during the year for example the let's 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 give me an example of the qualities of the consciousness for example, the exactness and coordinate and the exactness and and uh, ability to coordinate once 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 your own your own actions. 
with the higher aims and tasks of, of your soul. So the ability to coordinate your actions of your personality with the higher goals and tasks of your soul, as, as an example. For example, the third year activation of, uh, of creative collective activity directed towards the conscious service of, of, to the brotherhood of the school. The ability to cognize, to build new spiritual relations as the basis of new spiritual consciousness. The ability for collective creative thinking, co-thinking, joint thinking, which opens the gate, gateways to the mental body of the mental. And the fifth level is, is working with the spiritual literature. Spiritual literature begins from the most beginner, junior levels where we study great, great researchers, their lives, great uh, travelers, uh, persons who discovered new continents. Shure and Ivankov and Doinov, Doinov, Stanislav and Russian uh, writers, famous writers, Leo Tolstoy, Tsiolkovsky, who was a pioneer of cosmos, uh, traveling to space. And when working with spiritual literature, they are working on interpretation, its ability to comprehend and do their own work. And of course, this papers. And it's it's actual Thursday, actually. It's every Thursday they work in their scientific departments. They discuss their papers, which then then. Uh, take the form of new subjects for different levels of schools. Now we look at the spiritual expeditions. We look at the spiritual expeditions where the groups work with different important areas. So we see the so we see India, Egypt, China, Iran, Iraq, Tur Turkey, France, Denmark, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Iceland, Greenland, Southern 12. Uh, Arana was, I was doing, I was studying megalithic structures. We have about 1,000 of these photographs, several, several thousands of this kind of photos where I was working with megalithical complex. It's, it's one of my areas of my work where I publish my works. Now in Russia, important points of Russia, Altai region, Kola Peninsula in Russia, Vologda, Bashkiria, Ukraine, Tripoli, Caucasus, Crimea, to certain islands in, in the White Sea, the Ural region, Yekaterinburg, certain mountain, 
Tula region, Ulyanovsk Oblast, and so on and so forth. And the last expedition where, where I was wheelchair dragged into the mountain and we fly a, a helicopter to, towards a huge 13 meter high megaliths. Uh, shortly after the operation, which I had um, famous plateau of Mount Pupunur. So I was I was researching this in a wheelchair actually after the operation. That was funny. So, you know, I'm this type of an asket. If asket, if if there is a if if I have to do this, I will crawl, but I will do the work. It's it's because let me let me tell you a few words about myself. First of all, I have a, a tri tri triangle of the so sun, moon, and and Mercury, and cardinal cross of Saturn, Saturn, moon. Jupiter with Neptune, so it's it's uh, corresponds to the symbol of planetary servers, the triangle triangle and the cross. In my first house, there's Uran, Uranus on the ascendant, ascendant, and the ascending uh, node and Mars with Pluto in Leo, which lifts me from the dead. I can fall dead, but then uh, stand up and, and go. And of course, the first ray of monad and the seventh ray of the soul. So I remember myself from five, and I was studying and learning everything, philosophy, culture, arts, two faculties of the conservatory in 17. I traveled four expeditions, traveled across the whole country of Russia, all neighboring republics of the USSR then. Then I traveled to all to many spiritual centers of all religions, Buddhist religions, Christian religions, all Russia, across all Russia, and all after traveling all Russia, I be be began to travel to planetary centers. So in each year, I had many travelings. I took my baby and I climbed the mountain. So she was going, traveling in the remote areas. My, my, my small daughter, starting from her five years, was traveling with me. So uh, I had my family with me. And uh, in short, my spiritual path was most important for me. When my husband stayed with my daughter, I we starved because because it was a difficult economic situation, and at that point of choice, where I said I will starve, but I will not stand step away from my spiritual path. Then there were days where where I only had several potatoes and some wheat floor. So it was tough, but I did not step away for a minute from my spiritual path. It was my conscious point of my whole life. It was against the will of my parents, against the will of my uh, bosses on, on where I worked. I was throwing everything away and only climbing, 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 not the religious way. I understood that this, that was not religion. It's only in my, in the, in my uh, end of my life now, I began to approach religions. But I, I always felt that there is this strong and huge spiritual power. And I always 
I was always following this through hardships, through illnesses, through my family, but I would break through. So it's the qualities, special, very qualities of the personality. And of course, when I got to know the spiritual, the Lord, and I saw him standing above me, nothing would, nothing would stop me from that point on. I immediately understood why I was born for and what I have to do. And I teach this to all my students, only those people who learn to work hard and give their lives away. The rest go away. One more thing, I'm a professional. I'm an academic professional. I'm strict. My students would pass exams when I was their teacher, maybe 10 times before they were graduated. So in this school, it's the same principle of not allowing yourself an easy way. So all students who study in this school are academically pro professional and educated. I am responsible for every student. And the last thing, which I can share with you unofficially, our school is called the Institute of Spiritual Maternity. That, that was an uh, important initiation when I understood that the school can only be created by a mother when your spiritual Lord is guiding you, is leading you, you become the... Uh, maternal pole, the feminine pole, and the school is kids, the, our kids. And so we are preparing mostly women, they stand up as spiritual mothers. And so we can call our school the Institute of Spiritual Maternity. When I say institute, I do not mean the, the, the status, the educational status. I mean, I mean the, the status of spiritual mother. And do not forget that mother comes first, and only then the new Christ or new Buddha gets born. So we have to unite the Buddha nature and the Christ nature in the nature of mother. The mother must be the mother and the son at the same time. When mother gives birth to their sons she's the mother but when she stands up under her lord she's a buddha she's a part of the christ so this is the spiritual path which i open to everyone but only those who walk with me remain on this path path this is what i try to show you how the russia how the russia goes walks this path i yes i'm a i'm a patriot i live by Russia. I leave for Russia to step on this spiritual path, but all other peoples, as Casey, uh, Edgar, Edgar Casey told you, as Russian uh, Oracle Vanga uh, said that this is the beginning of the new millennium. The, these are the things that appear in the new millennium. And it's not only those persons who walk this way. And so I very much hope that we will bring, we'll build the spiritual connections. You understood that we are ready to share the spiritual treasures. So we have worked and accumulated uh, huge spiritual treasures, but we want to share this with you. We have spiritual groups, group, group in Canada and in Cote d'Ivoire in Africa in Africa, we are ready to do conferences on special, on some methods, some specific methods, some structurization. We want to hear your new ideas from you. So we, so let's not just meet like this on a webinar. Let's do conferences where we'll discuss new ideas and these new ideas will 
impregnate our countries and the souls who live in our countries. And the last thing, uh, there's a new slogan here. In one, one, some time ago, in 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 Soviet Marxist state, there was the slogan, which which goes like, uh, like. Um, but here's this one, spiritual disciples and initiates of all countries as part of the hierarchy of light unite. And let us finish this meeting with a hymn because I write hymns and I write music so I want to end this meeting with a hymn which we practice in a mystery so these are Elvis, Elvis Bailey, this use Elvis Bailey, Solar Angel. I invite you to stand up, to please stand up. I wish you happiness and good. Let us unite and we wait for your response and feedback and happy to meet you December 23rd on round table. Thank you to everybody. Thank you for the extra time.